Good afternoon. This is All India Radio. I'm Anuja Kumar with the Midday News. The headlines. Prime Minister Narendra Modi says this year's budget provides several opportunities to investors and people for green growth. Finance Minister Nirmala Sitaraman meets US Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen in Bengaluru. First meeting of G20 Culture Working Group begins in Khajuraho, Madhya Pradesh. Chinese and Japanese officials meet first time in four years for security talks to stabilize strained relations. And in cricket, India to clash with Australia in ICC T20 Women's World Cup semi-final at Cape Town in South Africa this evening. And now the news in detail. Prime Minister Narendra Modi has said that this year's budget provides several opportunities for investors and people of this country to protect their future by moving towards green growth. While addressing the first post-budget webinar on green growth today through video conferencing, Mr. Modi said the government is taking steps to provide every possible assistance to ensure green growth of the economy. विश्व आज अपनी रिन्यूएबल एनर्जी सप्लाई चेंज को डायवर्सिफाई कर रहा है ऐसे में इस बजट के माध्यम से भारत ने हर ग्रीन इन्वेस्टर को अपने यहाँ निवेश का बेहतरीन अवसर दिया है ये इस सेक्टर में आ रहे स्टार्टअप के लिए भी बहुत ही उपयोगी साबित होने जा रहा है The Prime Minister said every budget presented by this government since 2014 has been taking forward new age reforms to solve the present challenges. He said this budget will play an instrumental role in establishing the country as a lead player in the global green energy market. He added that this will help in increasing the green jobs and ensuring global good. भारत ग्रीन एनर्जी से जुड़ी टेक्नोलॉजी में दुनिया में लीड ले सकता है ये भारत में ग्रीन जॉब्स को बढ़ाने के साथ ही ग्लोबल गुड में भी बहुत मदद करेगा ये बजट आपके लिए एक अवसर तो है ही इसमें आपके भविष्य की सुरक्षा गारंटी भी समाहित है बजट के हर प्रावधान को अमल में लाने के लिए हमें तेजी से काम करना है मिलकर के काम करना है आप सभी आज के इस वेबिनार में बहुत गंभीरता से चर्चाएं करेंगे हाईलाइटिंग द इनिशिएटिव्स टेकन बाय द गवर्नमेंट टू इंश्योर ग्रीन ग्रोथ एंड एनर्जी ट्रांजिशन मिस्टर मोदी सेड इंक्रीजिंग द प्रोडक्शन ऑफ रिन्यूएबल एनर्जी decreasing the use of fossil fuels and moving towards a gas based economy are the three pillars of the country's priorities and strategies he said several important announcements including pm kusum rooftop solar scheme incentives for solar panel manufacturing and battery storage were made in the budget since 2014 20 परसेंट इथेनॉल ब्लैंडिंग के लक्ष्य को भी भारत ने 2030 से कम करके 25, 26 तक पूरा करने का निर्धारित किया वर्ष 2023 तक 500 सौ घीकावोट नॉन फोसिल बेज इलेक्ट्रिसिटी कैपेसिटी हासिल करके रहेगा हमारी सरकार जिस तरह बायोफ्यूल्स पर जोर दे रही है वो सभी इन्वेस्टर्स के लिए बहुत बड़ी अपॉर्चुनिटी लेकर आया है टॉकिंग अबाउट द इनिशिएटिव टेकन इन दिस ईयर्स बजट द प्राइम मिनिस्टर सेड सेवरल की अनाउंसमेंट्स वर मेड इन द बजट रिगार्डिंग ग्रीन ग्रोथ विच आर द फाउंडेशन स्टोन फॉर द ब्राइट फ्यूचर ऑफ द कंट्रीज फ्यूचर जनरेशन इस हेड स्कीम्स एंड पॉलिसी इनिशिएटिव लाइक पी एम प्रणाम गोबर्धन व्हीकल स्क्रैपिंग पॉलिसी विल प्ले अ की रोल इन शेपिंग द फ्यूचर ऑफ द कंट्री The Prime Minister stressed that the more commanding position India will hold in renewable energy resources, the more change it can bring in the world. He said India is the leading country in augmenting its renewable energy capacity in the major economies of the world since 2014. 2014 के बाद से ही भारत मेजर इकोनॉमीज में रिन्यूएबल एनर्जी कैपेसिटी एडिशन में सबसे तेज रहा है हमारा ट्रैक रिकॉर्ड बताता है कि रिन्यूएबल एनर्जी रिसोर्सेज को लेकर 
भारत जो लक्ष्य तय करता है उसे समय से पहले पूरा करके दिखाता है हमारी इंस्टॉल्ड इलेक्ट्रिसिटी कैपेसिटी में 40 परसेंट नॉन फोसिल फ्यूल के योगदान के लक्ष्य को भारत ने 9 साल पहले ही प्राप्त कर लिया पेट्रोल में 10 परसेंट इथेनॉल ब्लेंडिंग के लक्ष्य को भी भारत ने 5 महीना पहले ही हासिल कर लिया Green growth is one of the seven top priorities of the union budget this year. It aims to usher in the country green industrial and economic transition, environmental friendly agriculture and sustainable energy. It will also generate large number of green jobs. The union budget this year has envisaged a number of projects and initiatives spread across various sectors and ministries for green growth. These include the green hydrogen mission, energy transition, energy storage and renewable projects, green credit program, Gobardhan scheme and vehicle replacement among others. President Robdi Murmu today conferred the Sangeet Natak Academy fellowships and awards for the years 2019, 2020 and 2021 at a function in New Delhi. Eight eminent personalities were given Sangeet Natak Academy fellowships in the field of performing arts while 128 artists from the field of music, dance, theater, Traditional folk and puppetry were awarded with Sangeet Natak Academy Awards. These Academy Awards include three joint awards. Speaking on the occasion, the President said, India's rich art is the soft power of the country. She said music and arts are beyond the language and geographical boundaries and India's music and arts have been appreciated worldwide. आधुनिक युग में हमारे सांस्कृतिक मूल्यों और अधिक उपयोगी हो गए हैं आज के तनाव तथा तो संघर्ष से भरे युग में भारतीय कलाओं द्वारा मानसिक शांति और सौहार्द का प्रसार किया जा सकता है भारतीय कलाएं भारत की सॉफ्ट पावर का भी सर्वोत्तम उदाहरण है जिस तरह हवा और पानी जैसे प्राकृतिक उपहार मानवीय सीमाओं को नहीं मानते उसी तरह संगीत नाटक जैसे कला विधाओं भी भाषा तथा तो भौगोलिक सीमाओं से ऊपर होती है The President also lauded the Sangeet Natak Academy for its works in the promotion of performing arts in the country. On the occasion, Union Tourism and Culture Minister G. Kishan Reddy said the government is committed to honoring the artists. Minister of State for Culture Arjun Ram Meghwal also spoke at the function. The New Delhi World Book Fair will be held from 25th of this month to the 5th of next month at Pragati Maidan in New Delhi. Education Minister Dharmendra Pradhan will inaugurate the fair on the 25th of February. Briefing Media in New Delhi today, Chairman of the National Book Trust, Professor Govind Prasad Sharma said the theme of the fair is Azadi Ka Amrit Mahotsav. He said several literary and cultural activities focusing on the theme will be organized during the fair. He said more than 2000 stalls will be set up and more than 1000 book publishers will participate in the fair. Bishwa Bhushan Harichandan today took the oath of office as the ninth governor of Chhattisgarh in a ceremony held at the Darbar Hall of Raj Bhavan in Raipur. He was administered the oath by Chhattisgarh High Court Chief Justice Arup Kumar Goswami. Previously, Mr. Harichandan was the governor of Andhra Pradesh. This is All India Radio giving you the news. For quick news updates around the clock, follow us on our Twitter handle at AIR News Alerts. North East Diary program broadcast every Thursday at 5:30 p.m. brings very interesting and enchanting stories from the eight Indian states of North East India. North East Diary this week on the 23rd of February 2023 brings an exclusive interview with Padm Shri awardee Bikram Bahadur Jamatia, a veteran social activist from Tripura. Looking forward to seeing you there. Welcome back to All India Radio News. 
The G20 finance ministers and central bank governors meeting will commence tomorrow in Bengaluru. A tweet by the Ministry of Finance says that Union Finance Minister Nirmala Sitaraman met U.S. Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen ahead of the first G20 finance ministers and bank governors meeting in Bengaluru today. The two leaders exchanged views on G20 finance track priorities under India's presidency. Finance Minister Nirmala Sitaraman also met the Italian Minister of Economy and Finance Giancarlo Giorgetti in Bengaluru today. The Italian minister extended his full support for a successful G20 India presidency. Before the two-day event begins, a number of side events are being organized today. In the morning, central bank deputies held a discussion on road to policy consensus on crypto assets and policy perspectives. Later, a ministerial-level symposium on digital public infrastructure took place. In Madhya Pradesh, the first meeting of the G20 Culture Working Group was inaugurated in Kajuraho today. Addressing the inaugural session, Union Minister Dr. Virendra Kumar said that culture is very important in maintaining mutual relations. Culture has the power to unite. He further added that culture is also effective in boosting the economy. He hoped that this platform of G20 will contribute significantly to strengthening the culture. संस्कृति हमारी पहचान है जो विश्व के समक्ष हमारे विचारों एवं हमारी प्रतिबद्धता व सक्षमता को दर्शाती है और भविष्य का मार्ग तैयार करती है इसी भावना से ओतप्रोत होकर मुझे यह विश्वास है कि इस वर्ष जी ट्वेंटी का यह मंच संस्कृति को और अधिक समृद्ध बनाने में मायकी भूमिका अदा करेगा अचिन कठिन दौर से गुजर रहे वर्ष टू में जी ट्वेंटी का शीर्षक पूरे विश्व को सतत उन्नत और जिम्मेदार तरीके से एक समान रूप में विकास करने का शक्तिशाली संदेश देता है Union Minister of State for Culture Meenakshi Lekhi said that cultural equality and harmony in India are from our heritage. She said the concept of Vasudhav Kutumbakam, one earth, one family and one future and integral humanism are very old and India has always stood by them. Nagaland is known for very high voter turnout that are often more than 80%. Allegations of buying and selling of votes as part of the electoral transaction between a candidate and voters in a constituency has been common for many years in this small hill state. Despite this, some signs of change for the better are now visible in various villages these days through the Clean Election Campaign, a movement that was initiated by the churches under the banner of the Nagaland Baptist Church Council. More from our correspondent. As Nagaland goes to poll on February 27, many village councils in Nagaland have come forward in resolving to endorse the Clean Election Movement and Model Code of Conduct enforced by the Election Commission of India. Kohima village, also known as Barabasti, the second largest village in Asia, is one among those village councils that has adopted resolution for clean and fair election. Every citizens from Kohima village have been sensitized about their voting rights and more so the village council has also come out with strict conditions that no political parties can campaign so as to enhance the clean election campaign with Manas Pratim Sharma, a senior from AIR News, Kohima. Chinese and Japanese officials met in Tokyo yesterday for formal security talks for the first time in four years in a meeting aimed at stabilizing increasingly strained relations in Japan's national security strategy. Released in December, China was described as the greatest strategic challenge to Japan's peace and security. Both sides expressed concerns at the meeting. China said it was troubled by Japan's military build-up, while Tokyo is worried about China's suspected use of spy balloons as as well as Chinese military activities around Japan, including cooperation with Russia. In women's cricket, India will face Australia in the ICC T20 World Cup semi-final at Newlands Cape Town in South Africa today. The match will begin at 6.30 p.m. Indian Standard Time. India entered the semi-finals defeating Ireland by five runs through the Duckworth-Lewis method in the rain-marred last group match at St. George's Park, Ibeja, on Monday. In the second semi-final on Friday, England will clash with South Africa. The winners of the semi-final will meet in the summit clash on Sunday. And now, before we end the bulletin, the headlines once again. Prime Minister Narendra Modi says this year's budget provides several opportunities to investors and people for green growth. Finance Minister Nirmala Sitaraman meets U.S. Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen in Bengaluru. First meeting of G20 Culture Working Group begins in Kajuraho, Madhya Pradesh. 
Chinese and Japanese officials meet first time in four years for security talks to stabilize trade relations. And in cricket, India to clash with Australia in ICC T20 Women's World Cup semi final at Cape Town in South Africa this evening. And with that, we end the midday news.